What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another episode of the five takeaways where we're going to take a look at the Burnley game 1 0 win at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, which was the last home game of the season. Mm. Uh, we're going to take a look at that game and see what five things we can take away from the game. I'm joined today by Rez once again. Big up, Rez. Great having you on the show all day today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure for us as well. And let's get straight into it with the first takeaway, and that is reliable Ryan indeed indeed so obviously we had a good game we saw that um, and off the back of Liverpool and Arsenal where he showed some sort of um, defensive credentials he was actually showing some good stuff in the attack as well um, having nine crosses three of them success three of them accurate four key passes uh, two shots and he could have had two assists if Sonny uh, had put away those chances so yeah uh, a development of his game I think yeah, and I think that you're really seeing him grow physically into a Premier League player now. Um, you know, he's been a match for a lot of top players this season. Mm -hmm. Mo Salah, um, lesser extent, Bakayo Saka. Yep. Um, so I think that you're really seeing him grow physically in the Premier League and um, he's adding uh, at the other end of the pitch as well. The only one criticism I would have at the moment is, is that he still um, doesn't take on um, his fullback as much as he should. You do see sometimes where... You know, he's got the opportunity to where he's one on one and he kind of checks back and, and plays a safe pass. Yeah. But, you know, apart from that, he's still getting in good positions where he can provide positively in the final third, uh, where with the, the stats you just mentioned, you know, laid two on a plate for Sonny. Um, I think there was one for another player as well on the, on the day. So um, I think the kind of confidence to take on his man will come with time, won't it? I think so, yeah. And just be more comfortable in his skin, you know, not worry so much about injuries if that's what's going on it just it that's the impression that i get obviously he's not he's never mentioned it for us to be able to say definitively yeah that's what it is um yeah he's got he's got the tools he's got the raw material uh to do all those things that you would expect of a good effective uh wing back and it's just it's just a case of can Conte bring it out of him if that's the plan uh or not uh there's good signs there's good there's signs that it's happening so yeah all, all encouraging. Absolutely. So big up, Ryan. Let's move on to the second takeaway. And that is worthy win. Mm, yeah. There's a lot of talk about, oh, Spurs got lucky with the penalty and yada, yada, yada. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm sorry. The, you know, when you look at the actual figures, it doesn't actually stand up mm. because um, we had 21 shots, six on target. Uh, Pope made two superb saves i mean really top draw saves that m most goalkeepers maybe even pope himself might not be able to make again um so that would have turned it from a one nil victory into a three nil victory um the xg stats as well uh, are amazing you know the highest xg against burnley since jackson took over um and burnley had their lowest xg since mike jackson took over so we dominated them created m more chances than any other team has managed against Burnley and they created the least amount of chances they've ever created since Mike Jackson took over so more than a worthy win I think yeah no I, I completely agree with that and those XG stats alone uh, just tell you how much of a worthy win it was uh, we did have a host of chances that we didn't put away mm -hmm. uh, but not only that it's like we did look leggy from half an hour in so yeah. that makes it even more impressive and credit to yeah. Conte for setting us up um, offensively and defensively um, yeah look it wasn't the, the best game for the neutral sometimes that's the way you just got to get it done especially at this stage of the season uh, when there's so much riding on every game yep. so uh, you got to give credit to Conte you got to give credit to the team um, and you've got to look at the salty Arsenal fans that are doing <laughs> uh, the rounds on social media. And you've got to say, like, surely uh, you've got to pick your battles at times because they are just <laughs> talking absolute rubbish. Definitely, definitely. And, you know, it's the, old, it's the old saying, the best teams can play badly and still win. I don't think we actually did play badly against Burnley. I thought we played really well. But results like this happen. When a team comes and they, from the off, they are looking for at best a draw because they really don't believe they can win, this sort of uh, game will come about. Absolutely. All right, uh, let's move on to the third takeaway, and that is 
Patron Sanchez. Yeah, um, we've been beating him up, and rightly, I think, he has demonstrated real skill in the last couple of games when called upon after a very long absence from the first team. And again, the stats are impressive. He had uh, more passes than anyone else, 84 out of 91. Uh, so 84 completed out of 91. Uh, more successful dribbles, two out of two made more successful ball recoveries, 10, and also made more successful headed clearances, three out of three called upon to make than any other Tottenham player um, against Burnley. To, for, for someone who will have had only one match day game, you know, would have only had one match since he's been out of the side for two and a half months, that's very impressive. Do you think that maybe him coming in and not have played for two months and him coming in for that Arsenal game and then straight 48 hours later for that Burnley game. Do you think that maybe would have stood us in good stead because, you know, he's had quite a long rest and he wasn't as leggy as maybe the other players? I think so. It would have been helpful. Um, so, but, but bear in mind, he will still have been training every day. Obviously, a match day experience is intense. It's, it's where you're playing at full throttle. So, yeah, he hasn't had those. Um, at the end of the season, though, having done it for what, you know, August through to May is nine months. Um, it's still hard to, to do it. But yeah, he probably would have been a bit fresher than some of the other players, the, the rest of the very thin threadbare squad that we've got. Um, and yeah, I think it would have been helpful. But he still he still get, he gave a great account of himself. Yeah. Could have gone the other way. And, you know, a lot of players like him, Emerson, uh, Doherty, uh, Cessnion, even Regulon, um, Dyer, Davis, you know, the list goes on how many times we have put these kind of players down over the mm. years and all of them now all of them have come back and you know played for Conte showed that they want to be here yep. and they have shown that there actually is a player in there maybe yes fine for a lot of them we still need to be upgraded on but mm -hmm. for the job that they're doing now for the team I think is actually unbelievable and and if we're big enough you know to put these players down we need to be big enough to give them their praise when due as well definitely 100 percent. i've been scathing in my criticism of emerson royale over the last few weeks um but i will admit he has shown that he can do it in the last three or four games whether or not he can do it consistently whether or not he's one that will become an actual proper efficient effective right wing back remains to be seen i'm willing to give him the chance i've always been willing to give him the chance i just didn't believe he could take it mm. but he's been proving me wrong and i'm big enough to stand uh, to, to admit that absolutely uh let's move on to the fourth takeaway and that is halftime certainty yeah this one I saw this one and it was it was quite pleasing, actually. Um, Spurs are the only Premier League team who have a 100% conversion rate when winning at halftime. Wow. 15 times we've been ahead at halftime this season and we have won every single match, um, which is a bit of a contrast to um, Jose Mourinho, where we all had it in the back of our heads we might be in the lead but we're gonna lose this yeah and like under jose um you could definitely see uh flaws in the fitness of the team 100 mm. percent. i mean and i think that was a big reason why we kept failing um, mm. at the end of the games you know last 10 minutes were always ropey yeah um, under jose Mourinho. conte has come in he's sorted out that fitness not only has he sorted out the fitness but he's working on the mentality of the team as well the application of the team um, he's got such a fine attention to detail. He literally yeah. tells players what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, right? And I think the fitness, first and foremost, has stood us in such good stead for this season, where you see now, you see now, in the last 10 minutes of games, is actually our strongest period of the yeah. game, whereas opposed to under Mourinho, our last 10 minutes was our weakest, weakest part. Weakest part, absolutely. Uh, th I agree with that. I think, I think Mourinho's biggest mistake was believing that he had players that didn't need hand-holding. I think this lot, they, they need to be guided through everything. Um, you know, they need to have their fitness defined for them. It was like when, um, before the January transfer window, when there was international duty, you know, the first international break, he gave them instructions saying, these are the things that you need to do for your fitness while you're away. Uh, I, Jose wouldn't even give them fitness while they were still here. <laughs> you know, he gave, he left it up to them to do. Um, and likewise with the mentality, I think Conte has probably been looking at that in fine detail and trying to adjust their thinking as well. Whereas I don't believe Mourinho would have done that. Um, and it shows, you know, we lost more points from winning positions than any other team under Mourinho. And it's a, it's a complete sea change. It's black yeah, and white. Literally. 
All right, and let's get into the last, the fifth and final takeaway, and it's a big one. All mm. eyes on St. James's Park tonight. Yes, indeed. Um, it's the permutations are narrowing. There is, you know, only one or two different ways that this can now go. If uh, Arsenal drop points against Newcastle, then it's a massive favour for us. We're currently two points ahead of them. Let's say it's a draw up at St. James's Park. That puts them one point behind us with one game to go. All we need to do is win. If Arsenal happen to lose against Newcastle today, we don't even necessarily need... We only need a draw at Norwich or to match Arsenal's results, I think it is. Um, if Arsenal lose, yeah, we only need a draw on the final day uh, to secure top four. It's very, very finely poised um, in uh, as it is, but tonight will be a big indicator of what the final table is going to look like, I think. Yeah, and how do you see it going? Well, I think I almost said we're going to win. Um, we yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm from Newcastle, you know. Uh, yeah, um, absolutely. I think I'm going to be cautious and say I reckon it will be a draw. Draw. I reckon it'll be a draw. I'll take that right now. I'll yeah. take that off your hands right now. But I want to know what you guys think is going to happen at the Newcastle game tonight against Arsenal. It's a big one, a potentially season-defining game at St. James's Park where we're not even involved. So um, Indeed. let's hope Arsenal do buckle under the pressure because there is a lot of pressure mm -hmm. riding on them tonight, especially with the injuries that they have. Tottenham have laid down the marker now and it's up to Arsenal to respond. And let's see. Let's see how they respond tonight. It's a big one. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you, Rez, for coming in today as well. My pleasure. Um, absolutely great stuff. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come, come on, you Spurs. Spurs.